Eight years of free room and board is long enough. That is the feeling of an upstate New York couple who's been trying to kick their 30-year-old son, Michael Rotondo, out of their house. As incentive, they gave him money to get started. They even sent him several letters to vacate, but the son says he was not given enough notice. Uh, Michael has a young son himself who he lost custody of within the last year. And now these parents have actually gone to the courts and the verdict is that the judge evicted him. And I had a chance to speak with Michael moments ago. Here's our conversation. Michael, welcome. Hi. 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 Uh... Hi. So let me let me let me start with you're 30. Uh, right. The simplest question: Do you not want to find your own place? No. Why not? I don't want to live there anymore. I, you don't I, want to live I, with I your don't parents. Like living with, no. Um, uh, it's not. It's it's very tense. It's very awkward. It's uh, we have to. Um, you know, we have to share space, which, you know, maybe the case with, with uh, where I would find myself afterwards, but um, I'd, I'd prefer to get out. Okay, so on the prefer to get out, let's rewind for a second, because it's my understanding you've lived, you know, at your parents' house, rent-free for eight years, and I know you do your own laundry, you buy your own food, but they asked you five times, please move out. Why couldn't you guys resolve this? without the court? I would consider uh, much of uh, what they were doing to try to get me out as a tax and what I was trying to, I was just, uh, you know, res mm. trying to preserve, uh, well, trying to do what's best for me, which is just, you know, let's try to be a little more reasonable. You know, I'll, I'll leave. I don't like living here, um, but I need, you know, I need reasonable time. And uh, as an example of this, the first, um, notice that I received the February 2nd notice was basically you have 14 days before you're outside in the winter weather. So the first thing I did when I got that was I, uh, I tried to, I made sure that that wasn't going to happen. I, I contacted the police department. I said, is this something that's, you know, that this could happen? And they're like, no, you can, you just call us that they can't do that. And I said, all right. And I was like, all right. And, Michael. um, I'm listening to you. I really am. But let me just understand, because I hear you on your parents giving you notices. The fact that you were on national television talking about moving out of your parents' house. You tell me you want to right. move out of your parents' house. Why don't right. you just move out of your parents' house, like, tomorrow? Uh, I don't have the means to do that tomorrow. Okay. So, do you have a job? Uh, no. No. Are you trying to get a job? Because I, I read that one of the things your parents asked of you, there are jobs available even for those with a poor work history like you. Get one. You have to work. Are you working on that? Uh, I, have, um, I have plans to be able to provide myself with the income I need to support myself, but it's not something that's going to uh, come together uh, tomorrow. So... I'm, uh, I'm doing, I'm trying to do what's best for me. And, um, you know, I do want to leave and I want to leave as soon as possible, but you know, it's not, it's not tomorrow. I, I don't think it should have to be tomorrow. And, uh, well, you and, want it to be tomorrow. It just isn't tomorrow because you don't have the means right. yet to make it tomorrow. Here, here's the next thing. Right. I mean, hey, do you, you know, a lot of us have lived with our parents, maybe a little bit longer than, than we, than we wish we could. Please. Take a sip of your water. Uh, uh, do, do you not want privacy, Michael? I mean, do, no, you, do you not want you know, relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, friendships, space, not shared walls with mom and dad? I do want those things. Yeah. So your parents took you to court, if, though, uh, to force you out of, out of their home. And, and you sat there and right. you represented yourself and you argued that you should have more time. I know that you, you, know, you wanted the six months. And I've heard you say, you know, ironically, by the time maybe you'll leave, it, it will be that six months. The court didn't side in, in your favor. Will you fight the court? Will you fight your parents on this? I'm going to send a letter that I've already prepared to my parents' attorney that says, if you, if you give me, if you uh, send an order to the court, it's a proposed order, that is uh, for three months. Um, I and, and uh, there's a possibility the court won't accept that. Although I don't think that makes any sense. I'm not a lawyer. I don't really know. But you know, I guess the court can just 
can, can deny any proposed order that they like. Um, but uh, I would say that to the attorney, I'm, I'm saying to the attorney, if, if you put this uh, proposed order for three months in, or a proposed, or, uh, proposed order for three months in, I won't fight anymore for the, the case. And okay. the ironic thing is that if they had sent me the six month notice to quit in February, it would have cost them zero dollars in, in legal expenses. So, okay, uh, yeah. legal expenses aside and time spent in court, I'm sure you're irked, I'm sure your parents are irked, but you know, you only have one mom and dad. And I, and I understand right. that you are probably more upset than even you're letting on, but, but don't you want to reconcile with them? No. No, I don't. No. Uh, I mean, what, I mean, are you aware of the, of the component of, regarding my son and about how I, I lost my visitation? Yeah. So right, right after that, they're like, well, we, you know, we want you to start doing, don't worry about your, your case, which was, that took, that's a full-time job doing an, uh, setting up an appeal for uh, an order like that for custody and visitation. You know, what you need to do right now is get a full-time job and get health insurance or we're going to throw you out. And it was devastating to lose my son. And um, I, uh, I was just, uh, it really, okay. it, I was done with them. I was done with them after that. I was done with them after that point. My heart goes out to you on on the custody issue. Uh, sure. But the sure. other, the, la the last piece of this, Michael, and this is really my last question. There are a lot of people who have read about your story, and the, the thought bubble is, what is up with this millennial generation that you guys seem so entitled? What would you say to to those critics? I would say that I'm really not uh, a member of that of that demographic that they're speaking to, of that group. I'm a very conservative person. The millennials that they're speaking to are very liberal in their ideology. Um, but you're 30, so technically, I think you are part of the millennial generation. I don't think there's a delineation right. between. You're, you're right. Um, but uh, when people speak to the millennials uh, and, their, and the, their general nature as a millennial, they speak to more liberal leanings, in my opinion. So, do you, do okay. you disagree? Um, I don't think it's for me to disagree. I think a millennial is a millennial is a millennial based upon the, the year that you were born. Okay. But I think it's totally your opinion to say, you know, that that doesn't uh, uh, apply to me. And, and with that, Michael Rotundo, I appreciate you coming on. I truly wish you the best of luck. And, and I am a millennial. And, and, yes, Michael. Right. Thanks. Welcome. So that was one of the more surreal interviews we've uh, taken part of here in the last uh, little while, but I genuinely wish him and his parents luck. Let's move on.